So this week I get to be home in Texas, but not just anywhere in Texas. I get to be in East Texas, out in Tyler, Rose capital of Texas. And when I'm here, I gotta come get Stanley's famous barbecue. My name is Clint Johnson. I'm originally from Utah, but now I live in East Texas. My professional career has taken me as a correctional officer to a patrol or to a 911 dispatcher, to a patrol officer, and then a school resource officer. In the last several years, I've been in oil and gas. So it's been quite the ride, but that's where I am today. How did you get into using drones? The Kilgore Police Department that I worked at, they were always trying to stay on top of technology and just innovative ways to keep the public safe and to help the public as much as they could. And when they presented to all of us that they wanted to start a drone program, I was excited to be a part of it. Garrett Brilling, Barry Moore, came to East Texas to show us how much they could benefit public safety. And we immediately started using it in as many applications as we could, trying to help find missing people, trying to help with crash and crime scene reconstruction. And in tactical situations that were dangerous, we were trying to put a robot in place of people as much as we could. And the life-saving applications were incredible. And that led to implementing drones into an oil and gas can. So for the last several years, I've been using it for that. Tell me a little bit about that, where you are putting a robot into a dangerous environment rather than a human. So in public safety, it's a no-brainer, right? We get into some very dangerous situations and nobody wants an officer involved unbombed shooting. Drones have been incredible for going in where people, it's unwise for people to go, right? They go in and in some cases they can talk to the suspect with the technology that we have today. They can see where the weapons are, where the dangerous areas are, and it's able to improve planning so that we can go in and everybody can walk away from it safely, which is the end goal. For oil and gas, it's the same thing. There's several places where they send people to inspect that have potential where gas is leaking and that gas can be harmful to inhale or it can be explosive. And any situation where you can send a drone in to check rather than send a person in to get hurt, the applications are endless for that. Is there any concern flying a drone into one of those environments where it you know, could be explosive gas? Well, and that's what's so great about a drone is how high you can fly and still accomplish what you need to do, right? So any kind of technology you want to avoid putting into these environments, because even though the odds of an explosion are slim, they're there, right? But a drone, you can be so high up that you're out of the gas plumes altogether and you can get the data you need, you can find where the gas leak is, you can make a tactical approach so that nobody is in this dangerous environment. There's no concern at all. And that's refreshing in that field. So speaking of data, what kind of things are you looking for in oil and gas? So oil and gas, and there's been a huge ramp up of it, especially the last few years. We're trying to accomplish a very hard goal of zero greenhouse gas emissions, right? Oil and gas, naturally, it's designed to stay in the pipeline, and obviously that gives the company more money, but it also protects the environment. It's hard to stay on top of that to make sure that's happening. However, with drones, the data that you can get is you can scan pipelines, wellheads, so much surface area in such a little time and find out if we are having those emissions. So pipeline always gets a lot of people concerned, but your work has proven that gas and oil companies not only are conscientious of the environment, but you know they want to protect their investment just as much as they want to protect the community that their pipeline uh, travels through. So tell me how you're able to, to make that uh, protection happen. So the reason that it is so valuable is the methods that are being used right now, a lot of times it requires a person on a side-by-side -side or a four-wheeler to go down the pipeline and to check to see if there are leaks. Or you have to pay a lot for an airplane to go over the top. And airplane accuracy can sometimes not be the best. Whereas with a drone, it's something that you can fly multiple times routinely on a schedule and you can stay on top of these emissions and make sure that there's not an environment that it could be explosive building in the community. Tell me about some of the times you've been able to make that difference with the drone to find that leak in time or prevent an incident from occurring. While I was working for the oil and gas company, one of the cities where our pipelines ran through, the fire department had a report of a leak where the community was saying, hey, we smell it, we just can't find it. And the fire department couldn't find it either. I happened to be flying in the area, so it wasn't the pipeline of the company I was working for, but I was able to turn the drone and scan the neighborhood really quickly and find the exact leak source. 
And now the fire department only had to evacuate a small amount of people, which if it took them longer to find, it could have been a larger amount and it would have increased the chances of an ignition happening. Kind of continues on the theme that you mentioned of sending a robot instead of a human. What kind of time frame would it take a human to make these inspections that you're talking about? Oh, well, so in a lot of these areas that our pipelines run through, you have lock gates, you have creeks, you have lakes, you have uh, a lot of landowners that want to know why you're riding on their property. You have so many barriers as somebody riding a side-by-side -side or a four-wheeler. And a seven-mile stretch could take a couple days, and that's if you're hurrying and you don't run into any other issues. Or with a drone, it could take half a day at most if you have rough terrain. It could take even less than that if you have a gray shot. Plus, when you're talking uh, in some of the areas you're at, you have livestock. You're not having to worry about livestock getting out because you didn't get a gate secured or you're just not stressing livestock. Yeah, that's been one of my favorite parts of drones in oil and gas is I watch everybody else deal with these gates and making sure they keep it closed to not let livestock out while I'm at the entrance, not messing with the gate at all and able to fly what I need to fly. And that brings up a good point with livestock. A lot of these pipeline leaks, they can end up killing livestock. For landowners, that's their livelihood. That could be hundreds of thousands of dollars, in some rare cases, millions of dollars. Really, it, it mitigates all of those issues. What challenges do you face uh, in the drone industry? I believe that most of the challenges that we face, if not all of them, can be summed up to misinformation or lack of information. I feel like most people, whether they're administration or um, corporate or legislation, I believe all of them do not fully understand what drones do. I think that they see them as either an opportunity to do something cool as a fun hobby or to just take photos and videos, whereas drones are being used every day to truly actually save lives. They're being put in situations that would be dangerous for others, and in a lot of cases they're finding missing people who otherwise honestly would not be found. The more that information gets put out, I believe the more that people will see the value and the laws will ease up on them. The desire to use them more and more will increase and I believe most of those issues will go away. And just kind of as we're closing here, what, what do you see the future of drone, drone technology in general as well as in your line of work? I believe that drones soon will be used everywhere. I believe that if you do not think that they apply to your industry, then you just do not know what they can do. The amount of people that will be saved because of it, the amount of time that will be saved will increase dramatically and it'll be a great sight to see. I think in the oil and gas industry specifically, I believe we'll finally start to get on top of emissions. We'll finally stop having incidents of, well, or at least reduced incidents of people getting hurt by these pipeline explosions and these wellhead explosions and these dangerous situations because drones will be used so much more. So any last thoughts? I just am excited for the opportunities that DJI is providing right now and the various things that they're doing to give us a platform and an opportunity to spread more information, to explain what drones can do, how much more they can be and how many lives they can help. The more people that realize what they can do for human life, for saving lives, for finding people that need to be found, for putting drones in dangerous situations that otherwise would affect a person is going to be a wonderful thing and I think that's what will move forward the industry. You know, it was great catching up with Clint and having some of that Stanley's famous barbecue. But now I'm off on another trip to meet up with another great user of drones.